Welcome everyone to this uh, strategy group meeting. Uh, the first meeting to do tonight is start off the minutes, minutes of the meeting held on the 26th of November. Are you happy that I do so as a correct record? Very good. Very good. Apologies for applicants. No. Let me see, thank you. Declaration, oh sorry, Councillor Chai. Uh, I bring the apologies from Councillor Irving Swift, who would oh, yes. like to have been here as an observer. She hasn't got us to make on the on the travellers. Oh, I've dealt with that. Thank you. Noted, Councillor Chapter. Uh, so, Councillor, sorry, Irving Swift and sorry, Abigail. Uh, Wendland. Wendland. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Declarations of members' interest uh, for the committee members to be done now or the time of the item on the agenda. <coughs> so, we move to our first substantive item this evening, which is strategic planning issues. Uh, Community infrastructure levy review questionnaire, Councillor Jarper. Thank you, Chairman. Um, bringing this to strategy group for approval under as a result item, that uh, we should send this as a formal response from the Council uh, in response to the civil review questionnaire. Um, I don't propose to go through the document in detail, Chairman. Um, Clearly, we understand that still is very new for this council, as it is for most, and uh, it seems rather odd that we're having to uh, review it and comment on it when we haven't really got any ex much experience of how it works. But uh, we have already been able to take advantage of what we see as one of the clear uh, indications of SIL, which is that you can plan ahead with the delivery of substantial infrastructure projects against expected income uh, and uh, there are some comments in what is otherwise a, a, a very useful response I think that um, the su suggestion that an eye should be kept on uh, still in relation to self-build because uh, we don't want people taking advantage of that uh, and there is a possibility that some people might say that if I, if I sell you my your house while it's still on plan, then you, you, you own it, so you're building it for yourself even though I'm doing the work. And, and that might, uh, I'm not trying to give people ideas here, but <laughs> those are the kind of things that we need to be sure about. Uh, and there, there's also a point in the papers concerning uh, the importance of a policy setting suitable landowner expectations. I think that we see some examples uh, elsewhere in the in the land of uh, effectively uh, projects being held to ransom if you're not careful. Uh, and our eagle-eyed staff have spotted an apparent error, and uh, will bring that to the attention of the, uh, the persons concerned as as and when. Um, so it's a simple. Uh, Simple, simple recommendation to group chairman that uh, as a result item uh, we should send the <coughs> document that you've seen as the formal response from the council and I'd ask the group to approve that. Thank you very much to you Councillor Charter. Are there any questions or comments or observations? Are you happy that the post would... Oh, sorry, Councillor Cameron. Uh, thank you. Just to make, it's a very, I think it seems to be a very useful document, a very good um, snapshot of where we are. So, although, as you say, Councillor Cameron, it's a very early stage. Um, I just I just had one, one thing jar, a little a sentence jarred with me, just to wonder if it could be um, altered slightly. Um, at the right at the beginning, we have two examples. What page are you on, sorry? We are on page eight. Uh, and two examples of still... Uh, and in our expenditure infrastructure, and it's the second example. Right. And it just, it just concerns me the alacrity with which we, um, we effectively look forward to making bus drivers redundant uh, in the reference to driverless vehicles. I think, you know, the driverless vehicles idea, I have no objective principle to it, but it seems to me that they, we are, we're celebrating here our ability to make bus drivers uh, redundant in our district. And I just, I just wonder whether it's a very it's a particularly helpful comment when we're trying to make the case to government how. Um, how still can boost our local economy. And well, I didn't read it that way myself, actually, but obviously you read into the, just the fact that we're talking about driverless vehicles. Yes, because 50% of bus service operating costs are drivers, so removing this element, I mean, that's quite, seems to me, a fairly strict. Removing this element in strongly strong. Okay, that's, that's okay. the element of so, the loss So sensitivity around that point. Uh, Councillor, <coughs> do you agree? I don't know how you can argue with that. I mean, it just seems so straightforward. It just 
what I, I agree, but it seems to me in the round as a council, we would want to secure employment as much as we would want to secure efficient infrastructure and support innovation and productivity. It just seems to me, well, I, I felt uncomfortable with that and being celebrated. But, um, no, I, no, they're actually, Councillor Campbell. I mean, obviously, life moves on always. And you know, years ago, they have aeroplanes, and now all the aeroplanes are invented and replace other forms of transport. Spurs. Life moves on, so people are always move to new jobs. I don't, I don't really it's a, I don't see that uh, sort of supporting them getting a bit of drivers or bus drivers. I, I just think it's about the movement of times to a different world where actually technology is advanced. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you, Chairman. I, I don't think there should be too much into it. I mean, the most inefficient part of a vehicle is the driver. Um, and, you know, we are suffering um, on the eastern side of the country by the lack of drivers on, on British Rail. Something that doesn't happen on the Docklands uh, Light Railway, purely and simply because there are no drivers on the Docklands Light Railway. Um, and I don't think you should be too much into it. It, it is a specialised vehicle, and I don't think that uh, the need for bus drivers within villages will disappear. Thank you, Councillor Paul. I'd also say, actually, to be fair, Councillor Campbell, that uh, we are trying to increase employment all over. So we are trying to create new jobs. So if some jobs were to be lost in this field at some point, then hopefully there'll be lots more jobs around for people to, to take up. So I think your point's been noted. That's fair fine. point, but I don't think it's been noted basically the same. I have to leave that in the room. Right? I would just mention that if we could make the services cheaper to run, perhaps we'll have more services. Yes, that's an interesting mm, point. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't get driverless buses driving through my ward, but uh, if, if, uh, if there are drivers available, uh, then maybe that's... We could always try the council charge, let's get the <laughs> your ward. Anyway, now get the point. Let's go. So we have to set that to response. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Your second phase of the council charge is for part two local plans. Yes, Chairman, this is... Um, uh, a request that the strategy group should resolve that these two um, issues and options documents should go out for consultation. Uh, these are not draft plans, of course, they are, just as I said, issues and options documents. They give the background to the uh, requirement to produce these part two plans and uh, they, they flesh out the the consultation aspect by pr proposing possible options and, and asking people to comment on them. And of course, they're, they're also able to comment uh, on other matters as they occur to them. Um, the part two plans are important, uh, and it's important that we should have them in place. So there's been some talk recently that the government has said that anyone who doesn't have a local plan uh, by 2017, we'll have one imposed on them. Uh, now, we believe that we have a local plan in our joint core strategy, uh, which is our part one plan, and uh, this, these two documents that we have to produce in the near future, the part two A local plan, which will be the settlement and countryside plan, and then the part 2B, which should be called the Gypsies, Travelers and Travelers and Travelers and Show People Plan. Uh, Can we do them separately, that's what we'll cut the Sorry? Can we do them separately, those two? Um, if, if you think so, Chair. Well, there might be some debate at this part, that's what we'll make Yes. I was hoping there wouldn't be much debate because this is, after all, a consultation document. We can always try that route, then. We want to try that route. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I would ask, I would ask uh, people to bear in mind that um, any comments about what is or isn't or what should or shouldn't be considered for the Part 2 plan, that's the whole point of the consultation, uh, that people should read the document which gives them the background information and the, uh, the noted options of dealing with things and uh, respond according to what they think is the best way forward. Uh, the uh, Settlements and Countryside Local Plan will include, of course, the important matter of the hierarchy of settlement, which um, 
we've talked about for a number of years now, but we actually need to get down to the nitty gritty. So the consultation document makes sure that people understand what those uh, points in the hierarchy might refer to. Um, we wanted to look at the possibility of there being an option for a parish annex for some communities who don't have a neighborhood plan, but think that there is something in particular to themselves which uh, should be brought to everybody's attention. The, the, the idea being, of course, that uh, following this consultation, we will be able to draft our actual plan policy for settlements countryside and for gypsies, travelers, and traveling children. <coughs> The, um, so I, I, taking, taking a hint from you, Chairman, I think we can deal with the Part 2A settlements and countryside local plan. I don't think there's much controversy in that, is there? Well, I should just ask a question. Who wants to come to that part of the plan? Uh, Councillor Paul? Well, there's a, a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost, it's, it's a very well written um, uh, consultation document. I don't think there's any need there. On page 23, um, press notice releases, copies, etc. Council offices. Um, I would hope that we would send hard copies to parish council as opposed to parish councils um, having to look on the web. I think that would be a, a courtesy. On page 20, on page 29 and 30. There are various um, workshops, consultation workshops, going to be held in and around the villages, but no mention of a workshop in Daventry. Um, I'm exceptionally pleased to see the comments on page 39 that we've reached out to the rural areas. Um, on page 40, route connections are available at Daventry District's train station. Um, I didn't know we owned the rail station, uh, <coughs> so I think area. that could be worded slightly differently. Um, on page 45, um, objective three is to address areas of deprivation identified in parts of Daventry. Um, I was extremely pleased to hear the announcement from central government that an amount of money's funding uh, will be available for areas of deprivation and I would like to think that uh, our, our officers um, would hook up on that and uh, see what we can do to dive into the funding, uh, the deprivation areas being um, the South Brook, the other areas which when I was on the Joint Planning uh, Committee at the time I raised the, the, the question of other areas in Daventry, like the Headlands and the Grange. Uh, the last but not least, Chairman, on page 61, uh, we have a plan of the uh, possible areas for um, housing within Daventry. Um, option C um, to the south. Page 61, you say, Councillor Yes, page 61, Chairman, thank you. Um, yeah, page uh, 61, option C, um, in view of the recent flooding, flooding um, on the bypass and the known problems with the, um, the land issues in that area, um, um, I would ask that that be reconsidered and I will fill that in as part of my consultation response. Thank you, Steve, thank you. You'll be pleased to know that's all, Chairman. Not really, Chairman, because I think that, um, as we've just heard, most of those points can be made during the consultation period. This is, after all, not a plan or a proposed plan. No. It's consultation. a questionnaire. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor. You've got the message. Uh, yeah. 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 With, with the exception of officers looking at the funding, for areas of deprivation. I got that point. Um, and I think that is yeah. probably outside of uh, the document. And we we'll look forward to seeing your consultation response in due course. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Councillor Betsy. Yeah, um, the, one other thing that uh, Councillor Paul raised was the, uh, was the exhibition thing, which didn't include uh, these offices. Can I just ask on, on that point, Richard? 
Yes, Chair, we will have a, an exhibition in the reception area here throughout the plan period. So we will be taking the exhibition round those various um, meetings that are set out in the report in the rural areas, but there will be an exhibition here on the ground floor, say, throughout the, the six-week period. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's really just a question. I could have asked it before the meeting. Just occurred to me. Is um, the exhibition, is it going to include part 2B as well? Or is it just going to be um, part 2 it's, it's, it's going to include yeah. So each exhibition will include both parts? It will, yes. Okay. Yeah. Essentially, it's a, if I may, Chairman, it, it's not to, obviously, um, Staff and my team will be at all of those exhibitions, so it's not a huge for the public to come along uh, and discuss the issues with staff so we can inform them of the issues and help them in their responses to the consultation exercise. But the exhibition itself will be fairly small scale, but it's not just to say to come along and speak to, to officers. Uh, and I think that the chair also has hopes, chair and team will hope to come to yeah. uh, most of those meetings. That's well. the point I was going to make. I, I hope to be able to be there for all of those. Two. That's really good to know. Yeah, that's a good question. Let's just clarify that point. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Osborne. Um, yeah, I actually actually read every page of Perth's report. Yeah, we quite did. Um, <laughs> which takes a long while, as you yeah, yeah, probably yeah. found out. Yeah. But just I have to say, uh, <coughs> I'm, I'm not the councillor that sits here saying, well, brilliant officers. That is a brilliant report. That is good to go out to consultation. It's everything that um, we wanted to go out to go out. It's well put, it's clear, it's concise, it's all ready for people to make comments about. Yeah, and that and that's that's what it's about. Mm. I wouldn't make any comments at all, well don't mean to throw it, uh, about the content and where this should go and where that should go. It, it, it's for this to go out, for people to make everything, everything they want to say about it, and then we'll listen to it. But I say, firstly, and I'd like it recorded somewhere, that that is a damn good report. Not the word damn, but an excellent. <laughs> this is a good report. An excellent report. It's well worth reading. If you're interested in planning uh, and your villages, which I'm sure we all are, that is well worth while reading. Thank you, Councillor Osborne. That's great indeed, Councillor Chancellor. Yes, indeed, Chairman. Um, can, can we move on to the part two? We well, just want to check that uh, members have it. Oh, Councillor Campbell, I haven't quite got over it yet. Very briefly, very briefly. Just uh, absolutely agree with the uh, previous speaker. Um, just also wanted to highlight, as Councillor Paul has, page 61, <coughs> the map, which um, obviously is probably of the most interest. Uh, lots of Councillor Campbell, lots of Councillor Campbell are interested in it, as you can, uh, might imagine, because there are a lot of red arrows pointing in Broughtstone's direction particularly. Um, and I know that the narrative next to it says an indicative diagram is included to help illustrate the spatial option. Um, I just wonder whether it would be helpful to, have, to elaborate that, to <coughs> say this is purely for <laughs> illustration, or are we saying these are the only options? I just wonder whether it sort of neither says one thing or another, and obviously when people see a map and an arrow is pointing towards... No, it's a fair point, actually, yes, Councillor Campbell. Okay. Well, Richard, got <coughs> People can interpret that uh, how they want to interpret it, but it's a they, they can, it's really what the chair, chair is open to others to put forward other options to us. That's the nature of the, the consultation. So is it a case of sending the administrators uh, you know, to make it clear to the administration? Or you're saying it's actually based upon personal mm -hmm. That's my question. We, we, we could look at some additional wording, um, <coughs> but the important thing is it doesn't include other options coming forward. It, yeah, I think maybe that is, I think the point being, yeah. that needs to be clarified, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Just our chairman on page 62, yeah. you'll see under that issue of housing, option B, oh, yeah. 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 alternative approach from that must be above. And it's to reinforce Richard's point of the point point to point you know, Any ideas you've got, if it's a different direction, that's what should be prompt. Because you never know what might be possible. Yeah, I think the point that Councillor Campbell's made, which is a good one, is that people will see what they see and they interpret it, unless there's some words there to say. Sorry, or whatever it may be. Because obviously people tend to think that's going to happen. Then, yeah, absolutely. And doc, we've seen this before, haven't we, over many years, that people think something's going to happen because we see a document saying on it. And I think the only point we've made there is because the sensitivities may be around Broughton, for instance. I'm just asking the question. I love the, I think what yeah. you were saying, but quite happy to answer some words, yeah. indicative, illustrative, whatever words are appropriate. Like that. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. These words, can I just clarify, could you have them possibly in text? 
fonts on the map, yeah, that's a good not idea. over the page or before the map or after the map, but in a text box. You've got loads of space there on the map and say, please note, red lines are indicative, put forward your, you know, whatever word you choose. Yeah. Okay, yes, okay. that's right. Any more points or questions? If not, are you happy to agree to resolve that one on the paper? Okay, I'll be happy to agree. Thank you. Back to you, Councillor Charter. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, part two B plan, the, the gypsy travellers and travelling show people plan, uh, people will perhaps remember that in the joint cross strategy, uh, we drew attention to the need for, uh, I think it was 18 pitches uh, over the plan period. And uh, obviously, what this supplementary plan will do will set out the policy for fulfilling that need. And we will notice that the report before you on page 22, that's of the covering paper, uh, does make the obvious point that it is likely that some of these issues, particularly selection of specific sites, will be controversial. Uh, I've already had some comments from uh, colleagues about this, uh, but it was, again, it was clear that most of what they wanted to say to me, uh, I urged them to put in as their response to the consultation because yeah, that's the whole point of the exercise. This plan, moving forward with this plan, is essential um, if we are to have control. The point there being that if, if we don't include this in our plan, then uh, the inspectorate will be deciding where these sites go because people will apply for permission if we decide that wasn't a good idea and it gets refused here then it will go to appeal. We know that that, that will happen. Um, so there is no suggestion in this document as to where these sites might be. There is simply a suggestion, I think there are that there are two options on the, one of the issues of where should sites be. Should we decide at the plan stage where they're all going to be, or should we leave some of them for um, open uh, application, as it were, leave it to the planning system, in other words? Uh, members should always bear in mind that, that the law says that anybody can make any planning application for any site at any time. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't matter what you might say in the, in the plan, if they, if they want to do something different, they will have a go. Um, Alongside that, uh, no, I'll come back to that point. Let, let, let's deal with this, this part 2B first. I, th okay. I think I did have some specific comments from uh, a colleague that we were able to talk that through and decided that the, the consultation itself would uh, make this, uh, would provide the opportunity for these points to be made. So again, this is, uh, Resolution 2, that the issues and options consultation paper for gypsies, travellers and travelling show people should also go to consultation over the, re the specified period, 29th January to 11th of March. I don't think you want to take comments from anyone. Well, I don't have to. I'm just going to ask a question, actually. These both these consultations, where do they go to? Where, how would they be, so how would people get that consultation paper? That's covered in... Uh, Paragraph 4.3 in the report. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th these documents will be published, mm -hmm. and I yeah, said stakeholders. Though. I'm just wondering when you say stakeholders and point three. That's well, well, no, I was going to urge yeah. uh, in, in my summary well, at sorry, the end of no, this um, uh, that that uh, that all members should bring this to the attention mm -hmm. of all their parishes um, explicitly. Don't just imagine that. It, that it will happen. Um, if you don't have the opportunity to go to uh, meetings of parish councils or parish meetings during the consultation period, then early in the consultation period, bring it to their attention and urge them to respond because that's going to be helpful to the, the, the plan makers. They should always bear in mind, of course, that this is a consultation, it's not a vote. No, no, <laughs> so, uh, no. uh, we, we, we welcome contributions, but we don't necessarily do everything that everybody says we should do because we have to design a sensible plan. Right, thank you, sir. We'll call it a minute and come out of it, John. That's fine. Right.
right. Councillor Osborne. Again, spot on what has been needed for a few years yeah. um, uh, to protect us and to find sites for, for, for these people. Something I should have said um, when Councillor Paul said it earlier on, parish councils don't want it in um, uh, that form, they want it on the computer. Um, the reason being, if you've got 14 people on a parish council, one copy of that is no good to pass around for discussion. But if you've got it on a computer, you can all look at it on a computer and then you discuss it. So I'm afraid you don't want it in a, in a, in, in a solid copy. You do want it in computer form. Um, that's, that's very helpful. Um, that's most, most definite. That's the way we discuss things at parish level nowadays. Um, it, it's great. It's, it's what was wanted and what's been crying out for for a long while. People that have let's say, have uh, been inundated with um, problems with gypsies and travellers. Yes. Um, we have no plan and we need the plan. And as soon as it can be incorporated, as soon as we get all the comments in from everybody, the better. Well, thanks very much indeed for that, Steve. Uh, well, there's nothing else you can say about no. specific sites. We want to hear from people. That's, yeah. that's right, exactly right. Yeah. Are you going to use post newsletters where possible? Sorry? First news letters. First news yes, well, uh, no, I think we should explore all possible ways of, of bringing this to people's attention. I would, in response to what's just been said, point out that it's actually not possible for all parish council members to access the no, computer no, no. easily and readily. No, but that's how the discussion takes place. Indeed. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Councillor Paul. Councillor Hills. Yes, thank you, uh, Chris. Um, basically, I would echo what um, Steve said. I think it's an excellent report again. It's something that is needed. I think as it's covering gypsies and travellers, I think there's two points. One, it would be very interesting to see what sort of replies we get, because I feel sure that because of that, it's going to create and get a lot of attention, because that's always a new point with people, but something you need to do. What I was going to say is that we're having exhibitions at various halls, etc. I want to make sure, because I think people will have a lot of questions on this subject, that when we do this, we are fully prepared to answer questions and satisfy people, and in turn, not recreate further questions. And, and I think that's a, a very valid point. Thanks, Alan. Very much indeed for that. Uh, Councillor Warren. Uh, uh, point on page 134 and 135, the dates of the public uh, exhibitions. Oh, yeah. You've got uh, multiple visual down through the 11th of February, which is the next day for strategy. Whether that's going to affect the, the officers. So multiple visual between 4 and 7. Yeah. And that's on the same day as strategy. I'm sure that's going to be possible. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for bringing the point up. Thank you, Councillor Warren. Uh, Councillor Orga. Yeah, yeah. I, I have met with officers with regard to this specific issue, certainly with regard to ensuring that uh, consultations are, are full and, and, and all stakeholders are touched. And it's obviously building on the, the, the accommodation needs analysis of 2013 with Gypsies and Travellers. So, you know, I, 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 I commend the work that's going on with the development group. Um, I think it's really important. And, and whatever comes out of that, at least we will have a clear picture as to what needs to be planned and how we need to tackle some of the sensitivities. But not grasping the nettle is not the approach. The approach is to have the consultation, see what the views are, and then make our plans accordingly. But the plans will be made, and these people do require, um, uh, they, they have needs, they have, they have requirements, uh, they, they are a, a culture of people uh, that we need to help and support in any way that we can as a council, as much as any other community that we have responsibility for. So I hope that so the consultation goes well and they can move forward with plans that will help all of our community inclusively. Many thanks for that contribution, Councillor Orkin. Okay. Um, Councillor Ball. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, just a couple of comments. The travelling show people um, I had a site based next to the company um, and they were exceptional. Exceptional in the fact that um, they were absolutely creditable uh, neighbours, kept it clean and tidy, and in their off-season um, there was a ready um, workforce to be taken on for 
the winter period um, when uh, you have Christmas rushes, etc. So, but the other point being is that it sounds as if we've got a problem with gypsies and travellers, and I think the portfolio holder will assure us that we don't have a problem. When the moment you meet gypsies and travellers, people say, "Ah, we don't want to be here," and, and you know, episodes that were down in in, in Kent you know, come to mind. But we don't have a drastic problem. We do have a responsibility, as the portfolio holder has said, and uh, as the, um, my colleague has said, we have a responsibility, but it's not an overwhelming problem. Hundreds and thousands of gypsies are not going to descend on the Dallas Thank you, Councillor Paul. Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Tegan. I just wish to take a, a step back and just ask what the potential loss of the countywide travelling community or the impact of the potential loss of that which is contained in the NCC's draft budget mm -hmm. would have on our ability to deliver the plan once it's in place. That's actually covered in part in our response to the next item to the NCC consultation uh, yes, yes, I just I yeah. wanted to talk about it in the context of our local plan. Right, okay. And well, I'll get yeah, Councillor Chandler to come back on the end on that one, that point. You know, that one, Councillor Chandler. Councillor Carr. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I can't really see any time limits in this uh, draft and uh, I was just wondering um, when the sites have been identified, um, would they be there forevermore? Would it not be sensible or logic to put like a free uh, no. um, plan on in the first? It may turn out an unsuitable site. Well, we'll come back, I'll let the portfolio holder come back on that one as well, we can in a minute. Are there any more questions for Councillor Tarpa? Councillor Orgis. So, so just, just coming back on what Councillor Paul said, um, sometimes uh, we as elected members do say things uh, with regard to gypsies and travellers uh, with, which, which border on um, uh, uh, fueling people's myths and fears. Yeah. I think uh, during the consultation period, uh, mm -hmm. Councillor Hills talks about being prepared for some difficult questions. Let's be prepared, but let's not fuel uh, right. some of the myths and mythologies that go on with regard to tra gypsies and travellers, and let's have a, an approach whereby we, we, we talk about them and with regard to the way we talk about any other community. Um, I think that's very important. There is not a big problem. Um, but, a, but a lot of the, the problems associated in the, in the rural areas are tagged to gypsies and travellers and, and unfairly and without evidence. So I think just the word of caution of during the consultation period that all of us that will be involved in that, let's ensure that our rhetoric uh, is, 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 is fair and, and does not fuel the, the, the misrepresentations that are already out there. No, that's a very good point. I hadn't actually yeah, thought right. it was happening, actually. Uh, you know, Councillor Paul raised the point. But I mean, uh, your point's absolutely right, Councillor Walker, and hopefully that will happen. That this is treated along with everyone else on the planning system. And I'm sure, I think the trouble here is sometimes people have bad experiences in all sorts of life, but also different types of people. Not talking about traveling people or anybody. And then there's perceptions there. Yeah. So I, I think the point you make is a very fair one, and I'm sure with all of us as members we will adhere to that sort of principle. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, was that um, anyone else wants to speak? I, I, I missed them. Okay, back to you, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, of course, I endorse what uh, Councillor August just said. Uh, I was horrified when I was uh, told of a parish not in this district who, when they were asked to take part in a similar consultation, said, We don't want people like that anywhere near us. Which, yeah. You know, it's, it's not our attitude at all. It cannot be and must not be and will not be, so there. Um, <laughs> the two points raised by colleagues, that the County Travellers Unit has, of course, contributed greatly to the early work on this in uh, helping us to uh, get to the figure that was in the core strategy. Uh, and uh, there is a lot of knowledge and expertise in what is currently the Joint Planning Unit which we hope we will not lose, even if the County Travellers Unit is subject to some sort of review. Um, we are aware, of course, that that, that, that that threat is there, but we have we have the information that we need now, uh, and I think we're in a position to keep an eye on those things uh, as they change in the event of the CTU not being there to help us. 
as regards the timing and, and, and limit uh, that was raised, um, the, the plan period is between 2011 and 2029, that's clear. So the number of sites needed has been identified for that period. Um, the consultation uh, period uh, invites people to suggest if they have knowledge of sites. Uh, if not, uh, they're asked to comment on the methodology used for uh, finding and selecting sites. Uh, clearly, th there is no point in finding more sites than you actually need, uh, and so, but nevertheless, there, things do change, and if things change, then uh, we have to be prepared to move dynamically with it. So, I don't, I don't have, personally have a, a problem with that, and I hope that uh, you can understand that um, the selection of a site isn't just done on a whim, it's done after careful consultation and consideration of all matters. So it's unlikely that a site once selected would become unavailable. It is possible, but of course we would have to be able to deal with that. Um, the final point I wanted to draw people's attention to was in the report on page 23 of 172, paragraph 4.4, we talk about the partial review of the NPPF. The government, in its infinite wisdom, decided to sneak out over the Christmas holiday period a consultation on the review of the NPPF. Um, it's, it's our view that it's not sensible to have a separate consultation on that but to be incorporated into the development of our uh, part two plans as appropriate. And that's what uh, is suggested in that paragraph. Um, we don't know uh, what the, is likely to happen. So uh, summarizing, Chairman, it is very, very important that s stakeholders and the public, as is highlighted on uh, page 24, uh, we, we, we want to make sure that the stakeholders and the public are involved in this process. It's up to members to help us to bring it to the attention of the people that they represent. Uh, and I hope they will do that in a, in a positive and supportive way, and I'm sure they will. Uh, if It is my intention as portfolio holder to uh, attend the public meetings and exhibitions where I possibly can, uh, if, if that's helpful and uh, members will notice where and when these are scheduled to take place and will perhaps themselves be able to turn up. Um, it's a consultation process, it's not the plan. Uh, we will listen to what people have to say and I look forward to, to us receiving a, 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 a large number of consultation responses, um, but we, won't be, we, we are not to be bound by all of those because we have to make a sensible plan. Uh, so it is bound to be the case, as it always is, that some people will be disappointed and say, but I said this and you were, it, it, you've done something different. I remember when the core strategy was out for public examination, there was a headline in a local paper that said the inspector wasn't listening. Uh, what that meant was he didn't agree with what I said. <laughs> uh, uh, we have to bear that in mind in part of the process. So therefore, um, I urge people to uh, support both of these uh, resolutions. Well, the other one already, chair. Uh, sorry, uh, to Council Chairman. So do we, through uh, um, committee, agree to resolve item number two? Agree. Thank you. Thanks, Council Chairman. We look forward to see what the outcome of those consultations are. Indeed. Thank you. And now we move on to our third special item this evening, which is the uh, NCC uh, Budget and Council Plan Consultation, to which we as a council are uh, responding. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Um, I want to just open this up by saying that uh, as leader of this council, I am in regular engagement with the leaders of all the boroughs and districts in Northampton, um, on a number of matters actually, and also the County Council. And clearly the NCC budget proposal is concerning all the items very much in our minds at the moment for all sorts of reasons. Um, I intend I tonight to go through the res proposed response to sections. When really look at the response, um, in particular I want to sort of break down classic management, waste, 
uh, also the first bit, I'm going to just touch a bit on collaboration a bit in a minute. Uh, you look at wellbeing services, just to make sure that we don't just sort of skip over everything, that we have children's services, fire and rescue service, and then moving forward. I think we could do those time, not to take too much time, because they want an opportunity to make sure A, they're happy with what's in there is our response, uh, but also they might want to have bits in the, you know, we can consider as well. But this is not, this is a proposed response, obviously we can change it if we see fit. I wanted to also say that um, the first thing I have to say tonight will be part of this budget response will have to be taken out. I think it's on. It's on page 166, paragraph 2.3. And this relates to a saving in the NCC budget, which is around moving to a combined authority. Because uh, we said in our response there, we didn't think the four million figure which the county had in there was achievable in 2016-17. Uh, we now had a clear message from the County Council saying that's now been withdrawn, that proposed savings has been withdrawn from the County Council, so there's no need to put paragraph 2.3 in our response. So I don't want that point to be made. Uh, I suggest that um, what we try to do here is be extremely positive about the response. We recognise we can't solve the County's problems, but we do also recognise we're very much about service delivery to our residents, about value for money for our residents. So we have a duty to make sure A, we continue doing what we can do in the best way we can. Also try and help the county with some helpful suggestions. Also in this response, we'll see we do a lot of collaborative work in any way, and we'll continue to do that with all partners, other boroughs, other the county council, other partners, LEPs, all the rest. And that will continue. Uh, the waste partnership, not actually waste partnership are doing their own response, but it's also an item on waste there, which we can come to from the council response. And I was just going to say, maybe the author of this report, so I'm advising you, can you put it to And if you want to add at this stage? No, that's fine. That's fine, okay. So with that, I'll open up for debate. And Councillor Long, do you want to go first? Thank you, Chairman. Um, members, I have sat through two days of the County Council scrutiny review. Uh, last week, last, uh, on the 6th, and also today. Um, the, I would suggest to you that the, res the financial response that Councillor Miller has just described to you is probably amongst one of the most important financial responses we've made to the county for a long period of time. Um, as of lunchtime today, having spoken to Paul Glantz and the uh, CEO of NCC, the deficit they have is £89.2 million. There's been a lot of coming and going of figures, you can't have any better than from the lips of the, the uh, CEO himself, it's 89.2 million. That's the nature of the problem. And if you consider that that does include um, the four million that we, Chris, uh, Councillor Miller was talking about in, uh, in regard to uh, combined authorities, then you, know, you do begin to get some idea that they really do have a mammoth task. And as he made the point, we might be taking it out, but we've still got to find that amount of money to make the balance of the budget somewhere. Um, the discussions that have been going on, the, sorry, yeah, the discussions that have been going on over the two days I've been there, they've been attended by leaders or chief execs from virtually all the districts and boroughs who have either written as have Corby and East, uh, East North Ants, or verbally as have South North Ants. They've made uh, responses to the verbal and written responses to the county in respect of the request for information and support. Um, I, as, as I say, I've sat through all of it. Uh, the county council, county <coughs> councillors, have actually given this a really thorough airing and where they felt that um, the proposals put forward are le far less than substantive, they've made it quite clear to the Chief Executive. Um, I make the point to you that this is very important that we submit a response which is both is positive in terms of recognising their position, is in turn supportive of trying to provide assistance, but as I made the comment on behalf of Daventry earlier today, what we don't expect from the County Council is cost shunting 
that is going to come out of the county and very specifically be landed into the laps of any of the districts and boroughs purely to ease their position. But when you consider that 89.2 million is actually more than the combined revenue budgets of all the districts and boroughs in Northamptonshire, you may very well get some idea of the magnitude of the problem before them. I've been through the uh, proposals by county. Some are more tenuous than others. Um, Councillor Campbell meant, mentioned the CTU. That has been thoroughly debated, and from nearly all directions, it has been regarded by members of county that the CGDU does an exceptionally good job for what it costs, and to actually lose it, and for that uh, responsibility to be passed to the districts and boroughs, actually would be very would be detrimental to everybody because there wouldn't be a central core of information which is essential. Um, there are a number of other items in there. They are covered in the response that we have. Um, having looked at all of NCC's proposals, having been part of the debate, having thoroughly read the proposal we have, I can commend it to you. It is thorough, it is detailed, and it really does hit the mark. Um, it does say that we can be cooperative, but on the other hand, it does point out many of the weaknesses that there are in the budget. But all I can say is I would commend it to you based on all the information I've gained over those two days. Thank you, Jim. Very kind, Councillor Just to confirm to members, obviously, the District Road leaders and two sets have been working <coughs> on the risk of collective response between each one, because lots of these schemes apply to all the boroughs. Uh, we're trying to do this in a constructive way, because obviously it's, uh, we can't solve the county problems, obviously, as we mentioned by the figures involved, but equally, we do have a duty to all our taxpayers, because it's the same taxpayers that pay the council tax bill, we're a small part of that bill, but the county council's a larger part. But, but the reality is we have to find solutions. And I'm just going to ask you on that point, Councillor Long, on your experience, your two days on the scrutiny process of the county, have good, any proposals come forward in terms of trying to find a way forward on this? Uh, the answer to that, Chairman, is no. OK, thank you. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I would suggest to you from the scrutiny, uh, from the reviews that I've been involved with, yeah. if anything, such as the CPU, such as the uh, comments with Kick in terms of the new community yeah. company. Yeah. Um, if anything, the uh, scrutiny committee plus those councillors present actually have sought very much to have um, information placed in front of them that would actually support the recommendation. <coughs> One of their biggest concerns is there are quite a number of items within the recommendations which have just been brought forward have not been supported, and I think uh, in, from the point of view of the Matt Bowman, the 151 officer, let alone the members themselves, um, because of the seriousness of the problems and the ramification of getting this wrong, um, unless they have actual evidence-based information in front of them, they will not allow some of these items to go forward. So in fact, if anything, I think that where the... Uh, Cabinet have put items forward hoping to meet, meet a budget. Yeah. Actually, the members have done an extremely good job. They have found the holes in it, and the deficit on that basis potentially has gone up purely because they've not found ways of filling it. Thank you. That, that confirms my fears, really. <coughs> and the point is, I've seen this before, where you can put forward proposals to make savings, which actually cost you more money, mm -hmm. to short it down the line. And that's, I'm talking about counting as a whole yeah. now. Forget the bodies, forget the county council, bishop boroughs, the health authorities, forget all the bodies. It's about trying to find a solution for Northamptonshire, of which we form one part. Now, our response tonight, obviously, is about our district. We have a 257 square, square miles in Northamptonshire, so we take a large area of Northamptonshire as, as our district, so also we have a right to have it, a response which is before you now. now. I'm just going to say on collaboration, which you see on point two on page 165. Um, we already highlighted in the M2.1 the sort of uh, bodies we get involved in, the collaboration work we get involved in. Um, and what I'm trying to say is we combine the combined authority issue, which is obviously the in thing at the moment as far as government's concerned. We're willing to discuss anything at any time, uh, collaboratively, uh, to try and help find a way forward in North Hampshire. We have a meeting on the 20th of, um, 20th of this month, and it's going to help the Borough Council. 
Um, all, the, all the leaders bar one who can't make it will be there, and all the two exec as far as the county, including the county council, the county council and one of their senior members will be there to try and, ha and talk through again to see where the bishops and boroughs can assist the council, county council, in trying to move forward their council, their work, but equally at the same time trying to minimise the knock-on damage to our own services, because that's the other point of the equation, and bear in mind they're a small part of the budget in the overall terms, um, you can see that some major damage can be done pretty quickly if you make wrong decisions. But the point is we have to engage positively, and the government are aware of all this, I believe, the county down with uh, DCLG today uh, discussing their situation again. So uh, the governments are aware, our MPs are aware, and what we are going to do is we're going to deal with this in a very uh, constructive way. Uh, the purpose of our response tonight is meant to be constructive. We're trying to find ways of actually um, uh, putting into account some ideas. And what, as you said, for this, we don't want cost shunting and we don't want to have massive impact on services and also we don't want to make savings that aren't savings, which are going to cost more money for other routes. So as long as we have that sort of parameters, I think that's what the basis of this response is. Chairman, may I just give yes. two other examples yes. of the weaknesses that have been highlighted? I don't want to appear negative, but they should be put in context to whatever else you put forward. Certainly with regard to the, the kick company, um, well, on, that second, yeah. to be perfectly honest, where that's concerned, members actually have no belief that there will be any, could be any savings whatsoever right. in going down the route that is proposed at this moment in time. If anything, then they're in a position where it would actually probably cost more to actually deliver services in this particular way. The second one, which I know quite a bit about, because um, when I chaired finance scrutiny, I also chaired the scrutiny committee which overviewed the proposal for the Angel Street development. <laughs> we never really did see what I believe to be a good commercial proposition for doing it. It was the will that it should be done. It should be an, a, an inner town uh, building that brought together all the members of staff. It was meant to, or it will hold 2,000 people. Um, they were bringing people out of their own buildings, John Dryden House in particular, where they spent an awful lot of money that would go to waste. Um, and I think you're in a position there where there is even very big question marks as you, you cannot stop that project at this moment in time. Whether or not you just sell it on, rather in mm. fact use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there are there are a lot of these questions coming on, being questioned. So this is being the the points being brought forward are rigorously being looked yeah. at. Yeah. But I do go back to the point <coughs> earlier on that this is for all these reasons and for the size of the deficit and the implications for the districts and boroughs if the county gets it wrong. Actually, this is a very important response, and members need to be aware of what we're putting forward, the details of it, <coughs> why, and if there's anything else I can add as you go through, Chairman, I'd be more than happy for the experience I've had over the last few days. Thank you, Steve, Council Lord. If I remember correctly, actually, when we had our uh, response to the last year, this year's budget, the council last year, we did actually just one agent street, quite strongly mm -hmm. that response. It, 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 it's always... It's not, it's not a new thing, that's no, just... No, it's yeah, not, but it was, it, 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 there's never been a constructive program for doing it that ever would go through scrutiny today. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Right, can we move to the paper on page 166? 2.5, this is about the county-wide travellers union. Are you happy with the words that are in there and the other ones adding 2.5? <coughs> I think we touched upon county-wide travellers union already. You can see there will be a detriment or impact if that was to get removed as well. So basically. 2.5 on page 166. I think that, that that makes the point yeah. that without um, any sort of Yahoo sucks, yeah. it's just pointing out that it's likely to cost you more in the long run. So you're happy that for this? I think that's a very measured and just agree. Okay, so we'll move on to asset management. Are there any points in asset management that you want to, you see our response there, 3.1 to 3.3. Are there any, um, anything there you're not happy with? We mentioned Angel Street, obviously, 3.1 there. Are you happy with that proposed response as it stands, between 3.1 and 3.3? If you're not, that's the time to say it. I mean, it's, it's pretty, um, 
much as we've been through before, of course. Mm. I, I think it's right, Chairman, that we draw attention to the uh, the site at Grange that yeah. has been uh, not used and has therefore not generated any revenue for them, and uh, it's costing them money. And we've been suggesting for some time that some decision should be made about it. Well, to be fair, Councillor Chancellor, the Council Council have been in touch about the Grange to move up the leader. And I'm just waiting for a to come back on that. So I think there some movements on that. I can't say more than that. No, I understand. It, 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 it's no. written up in the gusher today. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. <coughs> so that being making contact, and now I'm going to produce the paper, which I'm waiting to right. proceed on at the moment. We have one or two proposals about that. Councillor Ball. Yeah, President, um, thank you, Chairman. There, there is um, no mention. Um, I've seen with regard to their anticipated precept. I know they've got plus two percent, but my understanding of that council board is they're looking at three point nine nine. They're looking to go for the full amount. Of the amount of the that two point nine plus two percent. It's two percent plus two percent, roughly. Two percent plus two percent. Yeah, I think one of the limits is three point nine nine. Is that right? So that, three, was, that was the figure quoted today. Yes, yeah, three point nine nine is my understanding on that precept. Yeah. That's their proposed precept. Right? And my my only other comment was it's such a pity that they didn't uh, listen to Simon Bowers at this time last year with regard to the angel building. Mm. It's a total white elephant mm. in the middle of a totally traffic congested area. You know, anybody with any brain. Um, would have, if you want to move a, a, a county council anywhere, then move it out of town, not not add to the congestion and uh, a total white elephant. I know, I know what their argument is. They say they're closing three buildings: the town there, John Dryden, and then Riverside, yeah, and yeah. moving staff into the town centre to try and create more activity in the town centre. That's what's behind it. So we, we have challenges. Well, that's their, well, that's their position. I'm just we've got a university that's going to fill up the town centre. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't want to sort of argue about what they no, decide. No, All you um, do is respond to what they're looking for. But I think the point is 3.3 .3 with regard to Buckton Fields, as much as it will upset our rural uh, members, there is a huge chunk of real estate there um, <laughs> that could recoup. An, uh, an exceptional amount of money and using our example um, with houses to rent um, could also recoup uh, but nothing could solve their short term problems. No, no, but what about that? That's in the plan. That's to, be, many years. to be fair, Chairman, um, uh, it was touched upon um, the other night at County about um, sites and getting rid of it and the answer to that from the electorals was fact that it's they're already in the program so to move them um, to move them to a different part of the program wouldn't help. Thank you, Steve. That's all. The other part of that chairman is that um, as discussed with other members over there, the the matter moves is actually not to move out of all the buildings. Mm -hmm. Is actually to retain one of them, possibly John Dryden House. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, when when you add that into the equation, I mean, bear in mind the millions of pounds that NCC have spent upgrading John Dryden House, their new computer systems and everything else. Actually, they would be foolish to move out of it. They'd be they'd be better to do what they intended in the first place, which was subdivide Angel Street and actually let it to other people. But it certainly is not carte blanche decision that they're going to move out of the others. Well, I was aware of that, Council Lawrence, so that's interesting because uh, it made sense more to make sense to vacate three buildings, which they don't own, and this one they do own, so they're paying rent at the moment, which obviously is part of the revenue saving. Indeed. So that's interesting, I wasn't aware of that, thank you yeah. for that. So we move on now to waste on item four. I'll let Joe, are you happy, you start with Joe on this one, are you happy with the response as shown between 4.1? to yeah. um, I think it, it reflects the position very well. Um, following on from our meeting, we had a meeting earlier today on the case, um, and in the um, trying to be positive, because we haven't yeah. touched on the um, tip sites. So we know that last year they um, possibly threatened those. We know that closed them a couple of days. And looking through the rest, the rest of the report, you know, it is a real, real risk that they um, could close, we just have one site. 
So I don't know whether it's worth putting a positive element in, just to remind them of the, what we said last year and, and go forward. I know we're working on it anyway, yes. but just add that element. So what would you suggest you put in the judges to get that correct? Um, just, I, I'd have to look at the wording that we did, we did last year, but something like, um, you know, we are happy to look out or work in collaboration with you in connection with the revision of HRWC. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. That's a fair point. Yeah, that's really it's, a, it's a positive, isn't it? It's a positive, yeah. It's another way of getting a positive. Do you want to touch upon, uh, just briefly, uh, what's going on at the moment in terms of what sort of follows when any enterprise finishes in terms of consultation, Jennifer? Okay, um, again, uh, we're having lots of voice meetings. <laughs> um, as we know, the contract's coming uh, near to the end. Uh, we've been uh, working on it gradually. We have a date coming out, I don't know if it's on, so I don't think out to date, a consultation on um, a member's consultation event, and we're going to go out to the public as well and consult, and there could be um, a change in the service. So I would um, ask you all to come along to that member consultation event. Just confirm the date. 26th of February. 26th of February. 26th of February. You will get, you'll get notified by email. Yeah. It's going to be after portfolio talk. Yeah. 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 Ye
if you move a large group of people mm. out of the out of the pension council's pension fund, the liabilities for those people moving out become crystallised yeah. on the day that you move them out. Yes. That being the case, if you look at the problems that the county have got at this moment in time, um, then add another 400 million onto the top of that. That's the nature of the potential problem they're going to have on top of what they've already got. So I think this is the reason why they've decided that, yes, you can have kick and you can do this, that and the other, but actually you can't move anybody out of the pension fund. Thank you for that, yes. Okay, no, anything else you want to add? No, I, 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 I think this is a well-structured report. It's something, I mean, we, we spent, what was it, a good couple of years on the previous well-being strategy that they yeah. were looking at. There was money spent on that. No. If I felt, genuinely felt, there was an improvement on what was originally suggested, I would say, well, perhaps it's something worth looking at. But I personally have to say this, I can't, I don't think a lot of the members have got a lot of confidence that this is going well. Thank you for that, uh, Alan. Uh, we've got now we've got Councillor Gilford first. Okay. Um, as you all know, I work within the uh, <coughs> NHS sector as well, so I'm almost getting to one here, being councillor, I'm working within it. But just to put some things in context regarding the kit company, uh, I'm not sure you're aware, but Diane, the um, MD, is no longer in post, it's gone to uh, the, the, I there's no MD as such at the kit company at the moment. And um, it's com complete confusion in the health service as to who we're referring into, who we're, we're meant to be speaking with, so that's just to get it into context. So um, I think the confidence isn't there either. And the other thing uh, to raise is just that it was just a little bit of alarm bells in connection with our vision, actually, because I put, I put the names together that, you know, they are closing sites, and the suggestion is to decommission two Olympus care homes, and in our vision we have a um, Olympus care home, and it's the impact on that as well. <coughs> okay, so it's a bit of a risk there. Are you happy with the response as it stands? I'm happy with the response, just so I try and like that. It's very helpful actually, yes. And for members, of course, there was a presentation on Geek at uh, yeah. uh, Shreffery, was it the yeah. Yeah, 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 just yeah. Yeah. And I know some members had concerns after that. I, don't, I, don't know. Know. I think if I might come back, Mr. Uh, Jim, that we discussed this uh, uh, as well at our LSP meeting, which I'm sure Simon Bowen will. Uh, I, I'm quite frankly, everybody who was there was saying we need a far more, lot more information and meet on the bug before we can move forward and have confidence in this. And that was our LSP meeting. Thanks for that, Councillor Hills. Uh, Maria? Um, I can confirm that we've been advised that Janet Duran, the director of the County Council, is taking over the organisers regarding the. She's taking the lead. She's the lady who's taking the council. That's right. So she's, she's acting. In um, Diane's um, stead until that process is replaced. Thank you, Maria. Uh, Councillor Cameron. Thank you. Yes, I'm happy with the response as it seems. I just wanted to ask um, Councillor Long whether uh, one of the proposals that members were seeking more detail on was the school meal service removal. Because that's the, I mean, I think it's rightly pointed out in 5.8 that, you know, how, how can you make that announcement without any, any rationale or explanation? I, I mean, I, I had a point of information about uh, or question really. Where does the responsibility go to provide free school meals if there isn't a local authority pro provided school meals? Um, so that's covered for Castle Island. It has been covered. It has been covered, and meant it, it is one of the items because it is a subject which is universally mm -hmm. spread throughout the county. It is one of those items that members have asked for considerably more information on. So what was said at the council on that point then when you were there? Sorry? What was said on that about school meals? The Just purely, uh, what was said was effectively that they wished to withdraw it, but at the end of the day, as I say, before they ever, before they ever really got as far as putting the proposals forward, the questions kept, kept were pouring in with, okay, please provide us the evidence, please show us what the savings are, Where's the, what are you going to do in its place, you can't just suddenly do this. And certainly up to the time I, I met Chairman, 
actually that evidence-based information hadn't yet come back, and that's why there was still a very large query over what they were going to do and how they were going to do it. Thank you for that, Castle. Uh, thank you. It's okay, okay. Okay, fine. Just going back to my data story, we'll do that. I think my understanding is the county council have now confirmed they're going to hold their budget meeting on the 29th of February. So that's been confirmed today. And so it's obviously very, very late to the process. And do you want to comment on that from our perspective? Well, just that we normally have the information in time for council. Council calls on the 25th of February. So what we're heading towards is, and we have done this before, in fairness is a special meeting of council with a single general item uh, after the council the county have made their final decisions. Now, without that, we won't be in a position effectively to get all our bills out and get them set. Okay, thank you for that. Sorry, Councillor Long. Well, while we were talking about somebody not being in post chair, and I know we don't cover it, which is roads, but uh, I am informed that David Farquhar is no longer in post yeah, yeah, at the county highways either. No, we knew that some time ago, actually. I think you left last year. Yes, you left last year. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Paul. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman. I think I want to give thanks uh, to Chris Long for sitting through this for the last few days. Um, I'm personally grateful uh, for it, for the information. Um, I'm looking at 5.2.3, um, where the last. Um, the last sentence in uh, parenthesis there is also a need for confirmation that NCC's back partial exception that will not be breached. Will, is that strong enough for us to get confirmation? I mean, I know they have a reluctance to, re uh, to uh, communicate, but um, to me that part of it is quite worrying that they're, they're, they're doubling up everything. Um, there is no guarantee that that limit will be breached. Well, I think the point here is we're actually asking the question, and it's uh, I mean, obviously it's their decision, and we're only responding yeah, to the yeah, yeah. So it's not for us to decide what happens. We're asking the question. I doubt they'll probably respond to that. But what, you know, yeah. I don't want to order on that particular point now. No. no, no, that's okay. That's fine. Just a comment I would make if I may, Chairman, is that <coughs> the map over of the one five one officer at County. <coughs> I have to say having been very reasonable in his allowance of items coming through uh, on the proposals, uh, certainly latterly has actually began to harm his position quite strongly to a point of taking what is the position he should be in, which is a position of financial independence. Yes. And he is not allowing anything to go through where he doesn't have financial evidence. He's not financially evidenced that effectively this is sound. Right. Um, the raising of this particular point within the report, I think, is right. I think that you can take heart that at the end of the day, the one five <coughs> county, if it's needed to be done, will do it and we will have those. <coughs> Thank you, very short. Thank you very uh, Are there any more comments or questions on this part of the paper? If not, we'll move on to uh, the next <coughs> section for children's services. I'm happy with the response as shown between paragraph 6.1 6.5. I assume that's a yes then. Yeah. We'll then move on to fire and rescue service at <coughs> 7.1 7.2. Are there any comments on that? Uh, those two proposed paragraphs as part of our response. I'll tell you that you're happy with those. Can I just make one, one comment that the fire and rescue service amalgamated in certain areas which um, the police, um, <coughs> with regard to control centres, I'm looking around at uh, Council Order uh, as a member of the police uh, and crime uh, commission panel. Um, there's got to be savings there, surely. Uh, but we're not actually looking at their proposed budget, are we, Council I'm just making the point. We, we can only focus on the County Council budget here. Yeah, and we're just making the point here. That's, that's, that. that's our response. Are we happy with that response? Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. If you look at uh, paragraph 8 and moving forward, we already said that we're happy to discuss with any of the issues raised above, and let's hope in a way we get a response out of our consultation. There's a lot of effort that's gone into this. I don't think last year. Did we get a response last year? Yeah. No. Okay. No. So it would be quite helpful to this council on that point. Council. Well, it was interesting the other night. I raised the issue of, um, uh, uh, of the planning service that we do, as the county council does. 
yeah. and extremely leading. In fact, one of the top members of, of County Council and Councillor suggested, I don't know what the hell we've got in County uh, uh, planning, uh, Service at County yeah. Council anyway. Yeah. So that was yeah. that was said, and um, not by the very top, but the second one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> nobody in the room, after I've made the point, nobody in the room, in the room says, "Well, we need the planning service," which is clearly du duplicated, okay. and it's clearly, to yeah. my mind, um, uh, the reason I don't belong to that committee anymore is um, uh, after seeing what was obviously pressure being put on one department to another department to get planning permission within a county um, and two extremely bad, two of the worst decisions I've ever seen made which would have never have been made by officers in this um, in this council like that. Okay, and um, that could not happen if it was, uh, if it was dis uh, both on schools by the way, so that would not happen if it was district wide. Okay, I've got the message. <laughs> can, I, can I just say on that point, on paragraph 8.1, that we, you know, I think generally, I'm going to see the deputy leader of the county council next week, I've seen it twice this week already. I might raise the point, it'd be really helpful actually, if the county could provide a response to our consultation. So I don't think they realise that members of this council do take this very seriously. And, you know, we put these thoughts forward in a constructive way, uh, for them to say, they might come back to say, we can't do it for this reason, or we don't agree with you, that's fine. But a response would be better than no response. Do you want to say something, yeah, Councillor? Yeah, sorry, Chairman, I do apologise. Reverting back to the one on fire and rescue, sorry, oh, there is considerable concern amongst the councillor, the county councillors, that the cuts in fire and rescue are getting very close to the bone, very close to the legality. And there were questions as to um, whether actually it is, what they're proposing to do, in fact, actually will overstretch what is. Otherwise, an exception could serve. Yes. Well, you're saying that I was supposed to have that problem with the absolute yes. collaboration. <laughs> um. The response, Chair, please. Well, that's what we said on 7.2. We're showing concern now, aren't we, about yeah. that? The response is totally, yeah. totally adequate, yeah. totally correct. I just bring it to members' attention that, again, there is concerns in this particular area that it's been stretched to a point yeah. getting close to where you can't take any more out. Thanks for that information. Councillor Gilford? Just a question on the, on the um, tenants, because what I'm hearing here is that you know, there's been a lot of scrutiny and there could well be further items following the scrutiny removed from the budget, with, which would take the deficit higher. Um, what impact will there be if the deficit goes higher and they can't set well, that's the whole point, Joe. We're saying their position is very difficult. Uh, obviously, the scrutiny function has been set up, and Chris has yeah. been to two of the. Uh, so I was invited to two, and I couldn't make them, so Chris went to my base, because I had other commitments on those both those days. But I'm very confident that Chris did a very good job that I had feedback. But the yeah. point about scrutiny is scrutinising their proposals. Of course, you can scrutinise them, but what you do afterwards is what matters. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's why I'm going to make contact, because we don't know yet, do we? So they could, yeah. I think the other part of that is yeah. the, the process is, is that uh, in the beginning of December, the Cabinet come out with their proposals for the budget. During the period of the December to so January, scrutiny do what they're doing at this moment in time and review them. They will then write it, or there will be a report written on the outcome of the debate. They will give their opinion as to whether they think they feel that there is enough information to make a decision, whether it's good, whether it's not good. But that then goes to cabinet for them to look at. But please bear in mind that the 151 officer will actually take a look at both the report and that which is going through. But at the end of the day, <coughs> he has to make a judgment whether he feels that there is substantial evidence there that he can go forward. Because if he is unhappy that there are items in that budget that actually he can't support in his independent role, then he will question it quite severely. So the, the evidence base, the, the, what they're trying to do at the moment is get as much information, as much evidence to say there is enough evidence to support it, Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. The short version of what Chris is, is actually saying is the fact that if 
the 151 officer is not happy that the that um, the 89 million pounds can be saved, he will call in the boys from the government and they will take over. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he is prepared to do that. It's such a shame he didn't do it. Uh, he is prepared to do that should um, that not be achievable. Thank you, Steve. Is that possible? Yeah, one comment that I would make, and, and it's 2.1 um, on page 165. I'd love okay. okay. that paragraph to be in bold italics. Um, uh, I really would. Um, I think we've led the way in, uh, in showing uh, how to cooperate with uh, our neighbours. I don't think it's a highlight. It's in there. Um, we do it anyway. We tell people we don't need to highlight it. Uh, they're aware of what we do, whether they want to hold it or not. That's okay. yeah. um, I'm not, I've got no point in what we're doing. It's not about that. It's about what the impact of the council's proposals are yeah. on our services. That's why I'm all focused on. Yeah. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm sorry, Steve. Yeah. 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 Perhaps you could answer a question. Both Alan and I were given the impression the other night there was a division between um, county leaders. Um, uh, the division being um, yourself and Northampton Borough were as one, and the rest of the leaders had a, 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 a more so controversial it's view, it's let's say, yeah. against the county. Yeah. Well, I can say both in council one because clearly. That's an internal matter, and I can't, I can't, I can't publicly comment on that. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, to Mary Markham and uh, oh, sorry, I can't uh, publicly comment. An extremely balanced woman. Um, moving on to 8.2, um, just two, 8.2 and 8.3. I think are you happy with those paragraphs? Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, so on that basis then, with the comments that have been made and taken on board by officers, uh, that would be our response to the County Council. Yeah. And trying to, we're trying at the moment trying to get a collaborative response from all the boroughs and all the similar themes, if that's possible. I think that's quite a good message from the County that all the boroughs are clearly the sort of principles of what we're talking about. Not necessarily nothing related to Downton District or Kevin on the other side. So I think that's very helpful as well just to have that uh, common approach. Because obviously we recognise it affects everyone in Northamptonshire. Mm -hmm. And they are the biggest body in Northamptonshire in terms of budget wise, so therefore that's the biggest impact. So I think this is quite a constructive response, which is needed, and I think on that basis we've done our job as best we can. Yeah. So I thank all the officers for all their hard work behind the scenes, because I know what goes on between the number of officers for the chief executive. And obviously I appreciate members' input on all, you know, on, on all the portfolios and, and also resources for Chris, and, uh, and also appreciate the opposition putting their kind of work in as well, because it's important for everybody. So on that basis, we set the result item. Great. Thank you. And subject to potential changes. And that concludes the last meeting. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you.